Ever since 2006, no matter what Zac Efron appears in, I will be there day one to watch. No matter if it's a Disney Channel movie like High School Musical, or even things like Seventeen again, Paperboy, and now of course things like The Iron Claw. I've just been a massive fan of him. I think he carries such charisma with him and it's been great to see him evolve as an actor. And The Iron Claw is not just an excellent biopic, but it's also a very haunting and emotionally triumphant one that features my favorite performance of 2023. And that is Zac Efron's performance. I am so excited to talk about The Iron Claw, and I definitely can't wait to hear your guys' thoughts down below in the comment section. So make sure to leave your thoughts down there, hit that like and subscribe button. And with that said, if you don't know what The Iron Claw is about, it is about the true story of the inseparable Von Erich brothers who made history in the intensely competitive world of professional wrestling in the early 1980s. Directed and written by Sean Durkin, and again, starring the likes of Zac Efron, Jeremy Allen White, Harris Dickinson, Holt McLaney. This is a little bit a point of reference I'm not really too much into wrestling I didn't grow up with it I had friends who absolutely were obsessed with it and the Von Erichs were very much before my time of even being alive but growing up with friends who were really in the wrestling and even though the Von Erichs were way before our time you definitely hear that name you hear about the Von Erichs curse and even though I know the surface level stuff about it, the film still could not prepare me. I became fascinated with reading into them directly after watching the movie, and I started going really into this. And I will say there are some omissions, like now after watching the film, that I find to be a little bit shocking that they didn't put into the movie. I don't think it pulled away from the film and pulled away from the moments, but I can see definitely people who were obsessed with the Von Erichs or really want the true big story in there. I can see some omissions to that, such as some personal lives to the other Von Erich brothers in here that are more secondary characters, and one brother completely not even being in the film. Again, I don't know all the stuff behind the scenes of maybe certain things that they couldn't include in the movie due to those circumstances, but I, I mean, it, those are some pretty big things. But pushing those things aside and looking at this film as a movie, and as someone who, again, didn't really know much going into this, I'm going to be pretty vague with the Von Erichs, if you don't know, because the Von Erichs have a curse to them, and there is, per se, a lot of elements that haunts this family, and specifically in the 1980s, there's a lot of tragedy to this family. And one thing that really much came to me while watching this is how Sean Durkin as a director takes this family, takes these performances, takes this cast, and while yes, on the surface, this is a wrestling biopic, in the underlying nature of it all, it is more of a story about not just toxic masculinity, but very much about love, tragedy, legacy, and brotherhood. And the way that he builds up this family, this brotherhood, their love for wrestling specifically, but their love for each other, is one of the most delicately crafted families that I've seen in a movie. To where you feel a part of the film. You feel for every character. You feel and love these brothers. And whether it's one brother getting a title shot championship where you feel like this other brother should have probably had that before him, you feel the jealousy that that one might feel, but also you feel the love and you're like, yeah, that, that's awesome for you. But that, that deep down you were like, no, no, that should be me. You feel all those little elements. And I think what Sean Darkin does such a great job with is developing the family, developing all of that so early on in the movie. When tragedy strikes, you feel like you are a part of this family. You feel that depth and emotion and that, again, hurt. And I think Sean Durkin's direction is so delicate here in the way that he handles being hurt grieving, feeling pain and loss and going through these tragic moments. And I think I've seen a lot of films this year where grief, tragedy, these are all very much undertones to it all. And one thing I think this film gets stronger than any of those is seeing someone who per se was told not to cry, who was raised that men don't cry. And seeing how they can bottle up that pain and try to hold it in. 
Because if you've ever been in that point where maybe you're in a situation where you cannot let those emotions out, but you want to. I have the camera, the cinematography, all that stuff that Sean Durkin chose in stylized here, even in thematical levels, like certain things that kind of just pulls reference or parallels to earlier things in the film or, or later on in the movies, different things that parallel to things that you've already seen. It's really much kind of a legacy and an honor to many brotherhoods and family members and families to anything. It's more than just the Von Erichs per se. And that's what I really was touched about. And I like how, again, someone like Sean Durkin as a director and writer can take a family like this and display so many different themes. And I think Sofia Coppola did an awesome job with that as well with Priscilla earlier this year, where she took themes and ideas of what of course, Priscilla was feeling in Elvis's relationship and was able to establish that in the movie. And while not everything is completely accurate and not everything is up to reference, it's the same thing within the Iron Claw where, yes, there's those obvious omissions and I'm like, okay, that's a little bit weird. You feel like that should be there, especially when you start reading about it. But in the end of the day, they still tackled the main idea and the main concept. And that's going to be different for how everyone feels, but I... I get it to a certain degree on what Sean Durkin was doing, and I, I love that. But I've been rambling and ranting so much about the themes and the parallels and what Sean Durkin did here. I, I, I mean, none of this works without the performances. And like to start with the, like all the side characters, uh, Jeremy Allen White, I've been a fan of since Shameless, and then he's in The Bear, and he's incredible in there, but he is just again phenomenal there, there's no doubt about it Harris Dickinson also another phenomenal actor just great with the material he works with Mara Turney who plays their mother I think is also really underrated in here I think her performance is very subdued Holt McClaney I, I mean I just love this guy every time he shows up in anything he is just phenomenal and he's great in here and of course you have Stanley Simmons who's another one of the brothers I think Lily James deserves a little bit of love too and I don't think I see enough of her conversation out there while she has a very small role in here she plays the love interest to Zac Efron's character Kevin and I really loved all the different instances of her and while almost all this film is from his perspective I think it's pretty brilliant how they were able to bring her in and you can instantly see why he fell in love with her like they're able to move the pacing of the film in such a gracious way that it never feels too long or too short just kind of feels right in the middle where you're like damn I I'm into this. Like I mentioned off the top, Zac Efron's performance. Uh, my favorite thing I've seen this year from an actor. And I know there's been a, a lot of phenomenal performances this year. Cillian Murphy, Jeffrey Wright, Bradley Cooper, uh, Coleman Domingo. I mean, the list goes on and on from there. Paul Giamatti from The Holdovers. That was incredible. Sometimes you see a performance in a movie and you're like, yeah, that is a performance that is absolutely going to stay with me. And what I got from this one was the same feeling I had when I watched Nightcrawler with Jake Gyllenhaal for the first time. And while they are completely two separate performances, on a physicality level, of course, yes, he bulked up and everything, but on a physicality level, what he's able to do with his posture and everything like that, to an emotional level, Zac Efron just destroys you in every way. Like, his performance in here is unforgettable, and it's haunting, to say the least. And it's completely relatable, and it will break you. And I truly walked away in an emotional, like, tornado of feelings. And every time Zac Efron's character was feeling some type of way, oh, I felt the same damn type of way. And I was very impressed to see what Zac Efron was able to do with this role and how he was able to come about it this is my favorite performance of his and it's my favorite performance of this year in my total opinion he should be nominated for an oscar it would be absolute tragedy if he was not and he should win there's just no doubt about it he should it's one of those performances that like i said reminded very very much of jake gyllenhaal's nightcrawler which i love that movie two completely different performances but two performances that you continue to keep thinking about like once a day i probably think about that performance from nightcrawler and i think the same thing is gonna be said for here on the technical side i want to just say the score 
is so good in here and adds to every single one of the moments. Same thing with the soundtrack. I was really vibing with the choices that Sean Durkin did for that as well. There's some really brilliant and soft touches to the editing too that I don't, again, see enough people talking about. Like certain things where you see all the brothers kind of faded into one. And it just feels like perfectly collaged. It's it's very unique. Honestly, like the Iron Claw is just an outstanding, heartbreaking, triumphant story of brotherhood, love, and legacy. Featuring an all-star cast, but Zac Efron, just hand him the Oscar in my opinion. A physically and emotionally haunting performance that will stay with you long after the film is over. Uh, technically, it's great. Sean Durkin is a great director and writer. And for me the the whole viewpoint and the way that while wrestling yes is a big part of their life and i really like how they had touched on that as someone who's not huge into wrestling i liked how they told the story through it the only thing that i do think is after reading on the true story i think the film could have been longer i think the film could have been easily 20 to 30 minutes longer and i know that maybe not everyone's cup of tea there's so many long run times nowadays and maybe this is the perfect run time for the story and i'm not sure why they had to leave so many omissions but there's certain things to the other brother stories that i wish they would have touched on a little bit more specifically in their personal life and their personal relationships and the one brother that's completely missing it's very interesting that they left one brother out completely but with that said if I didn't look that up, I would have never known about that. And just stating on what the film is, I love this movie. It's one of my favorites of the entire year. And I can absolutely not wait to hear what your guys' thoughts are on the Iron Claw. So with all that said, I'm going to give this film an A. Thank you so much again, guys, for watching this. Make sure to hit that like, subscribe button, comment down below your guys' thoughts. And of course, until next time, stay classy.